the world is Aaron Rodgers. The answer is Egypt. <laughs> well, it was. was in Egypt. I think he's back now. Oh, shoot. You'd have lost that game. Yeah, he's back. Oh, darn it. Yeah. You get control of the board. <laughs> uh, Connor Hughes reporting that Rodgers pieced together this trip during his Achilles recovery. He wanted something to look forward to. And that players had no issue with this trip and were, quote, surprised that those outside one Jets drive felt differently. Thanks, Connor. Also, hysteria over Rodgers' whereabouts emerged largely because of the way the absence was announced. Oh, so whose fault is that? Well, the team. They're blaming Salah. They are Rogers blaming Salah. They are blaming Salah. Yeah. Uh, so while they were aware of Rodgers' trip and understanding of why it was important to him, uh, their public stance on the matter gave the impression they were not and discounted Rogers' near perfect. So this ending. is so shameful. Throughout the voluntary report, this is shameful. The offseason <laughs> is nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. You, we, I, I mean, this no, is there is uh, this is so. I know you're upset. I mean, it's just it, I. I don't think Robert Sala is a very good coach. I'm on the record on that. There is nothing I have said. That is as unfair to Salah as this line Ooh. of reporting and reasoning, which is this wouldn't have been a problem if Robert Salah didn't make it a problem. That's what that implication clearly is. Yeah. is the, and by the way, I don't believe that it was Robert Salah and Robert Salah alone that called it unexcused. I agree. But now the organization is trying to leak to friendly reporting, much ado about nothing, when they did the version of concerned, very concerned for this year's Buffalo Bills, except it was the Jets with, with Aaron Rodgers not being there. And as far as Brew, does he need to clear the air? This is, so it has now been reported by multiple places he was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I, there is also, I think, if you listen to Aaron's own words about some of his interest in Egypt, it seems to be, what, along the lines of a lot of the what some would call conspiratorial beliefs he has about previous societies, Tartania, all those things. I'm not. There's a lot of reasons people go to Egypt, but I would for Aaron. I don't think it's unfair to assume that was part of the allure there. So here's the point I'm making about: Does he need to clear the air, bro? If we all agree that if we found out, hey, Aaron. You're finally talking. Why weren't you at minicamp? And the answer is, well, I didn't want it to come out, but I was donating a kidney, saving a relative's life. We'd all be like, oh, my God, we all owe you an apology. There are, there is, there are, extreme, there are reasons, and if it was, oh, um, brother's wife was having a baby. I wanted to be there. Sure. You'd be like, okay, not quite the kidney, but there's, there's and a those scale. Those so, would have been excused, so, right, too. Right, sure. Um, and if it was, you know what? I was mentally burnt out in a way I didn't expect I would be, and I just thought it was best for me to just be away, quiet retreat. Would have been fine. I think that... Uh, Which that's, he might say. Right. By the way, I think that's somewhere here on there. If the answer is, it was the only time on the schedule the Egyptologist would tell me about Tartania, so I had to go, that's over here. <laughs> And so if we all agree that there are certain excuses that would give you more grace, this would be one that would, I think, fairly generate the least. My wacky YouTube Reddit-laden brain had to go see these pyramids for myself because I think a different society built them. If that's the reason, yeah, you need to clear the air. That's fair. That is logically consistent. And so, yeah, I think he should clear the air, bro. Whatever the reason, he needs to clear the air. I mean, he, he owes it to the to his teammates, to the Jets organization. You had an inexcused absence. Tell us why. I mean, that, that that's got those are the questions he has to answer. Where'd you go? Why did you go during minicamp? You 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 know Aaron generally when mandatory Correct. mini camp happens. The, the, all right? the ten day window. You could schedule that any time. Why didn't you schedule it early, later, whatever? What'd you think about the Jets the way they handled it? Why it was inexcused? Do you have a prop? Like there's so many questions they need to ask him. All right, so he absolutely should clear the air. They need it cleared so this doesn't – look, I don't think this affects how he plays. I don't think any of us uh, believe this will affect how he plays. But it just goes to show you 
Where is his mind at? You're the guy that said, get all non-football distractions out of the right. building, and now you go ahead to Egypt for a vacation while we're all at minicamp. Before you go, Wilds, yeah. a, a quick question. Brew, do you think it affects his ability to lead? Because I do. I don't. So well, I, I don't think it affects his ability to throw a football, right. but I think it affects his ability to be the unquestioned voice and leader of the team. I I, I tend to agree because I think we all, you know, with the things he said, it's hypocritical. We yeah. talked about it, selfish. But if those players are all in on him and like, hey, we're fine with. It. If they really are, then they can get past that. See. But I think I think some of the staff. Like the coach, I, I think Robert Sala was bothered. And I'm not mad at him for being bothered. Don't you think that the Jets, and it's a natural reaction, where maybe they had an issue a little bit with Aaron Rodgers taking off. It's the reason why he was fine. It was unexcused. But the criticism was so over the top, let's say, how, how they would view it. In this article, it was, it was the word hysteria was used. <laughs> that they circle the wagons. And you're like, you know what? I didn't like it. But now that you guys are coming after it so much, we're going to stand behind Rodgers even more. Yeah, m maybe. But that then, unfortunately, re reveals a totally different dysfunction, which is if you did not expect this to get this exact level of coverage, then you're unserious. Right. Yeah. If you, if you, you, think if you thought, ah, It'll be a one-day story. <laughs> then you don't know what you're doing. In New York? Then like the, right, in New the York places? with one of, what is Rodgers at worst? The fifth most famous player in the league? Sure. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I feel like Mahomes and Kelsey, if Kelsey gets the Taylor Swift stuff, Mahomes yep. are in a separate area. But you could argue after those two, he's the most famous. Yeah. And so, like, and it's the Jets, and he's certainly top five most polarizing, right or wrong. All of that. And... For, to not anticipate that there would be hysteria. And by the way, I don't think there was hysteria. I think there was fair questions. <clears throat> and I think there was legitimate poking at, this is wildly hypocritical given right. what you have said on the record. Mm -hmm. and, and your lack as a team, as a player of foresight in getting ahead of it. Because that's the other part of it. Is all of this right or wrong is, is taken from the media differently if on one of his first days of being at OTAs, instead of just basking in the, the PR of doesn't have to be here, I'm here, you were like, By, you know what I mean? I thought it was really I'm important to, to be here because yeah, yeah. I knew and the That's team right. knew. But the other piece of it, Brew, and this is why I think he needs to clear the air, is Sala made it clear he knew this was going on. But we also know sometimes we get lost in the flood of nonsense surrounding this team. His teammates did not. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor took the field that day not knowing he was going to be first And he should have let them know, too. Of course. And that's where the question about – it's all about how they respond. If privately guys are like, man, come on. You, I, you chastising us and talking about getting distractions out of the building and now you do this privately, if they might be. Because publicly they're saying the right thing, that's fine. If privately they feel that way – that's a huge problem. Well, and remember Woody Johnson when he tweeted out how Rodgers looks as good yeah. as ever when oh, he's slinging it. Oh, yeah. So they are definitely in spin mode, and, and that's more of what oh, we He's out there today. like he's 26 years old. This is great. Um, all right, so now we're going to talk about from the leader of the team to the final draft pick this year. It's Jets rookie Jalen Key. He was taken last in the draft but does exude a Brock Purdy level of confidence <laughs> when it comes to critics of the Jets. Quote, We'll shut some mouths. Okay. Are you buying the Jets will silence their critics, bro? I, I, you know I like their roster. Yeah. All right. Come on. Here we go. On paper, and you can't say anything, Nick, what now now that you're back in the 76ers what? with all their injury, <laughs> injury possibilities. Um, and I don't think that – this missing mini camp is going to be the difference between Aaron Rodgers having a great year, mediocre sure. year, bad year, whatever. And my problem with them is just Rodgers, it's just one mess after another, even though he didn't even play last year. It's still one, you're putting out fires all over the place with him. But that said, on paper, and Nick, you, you don't like this guy and how he, the job he's done, I'll say. 
They have won seven games the, each of the last two years. Wilds are going to get mad. With some of the worst. Right. I'm being kind okay. in saying some of the worst quarterback play in football. So if he can win three more games. If, if, if Aaron Rodgers no, is don't. pretty good, right, pretty good, that's not worth two or three more victories. <laughs> I, so. I'm just saying the division's tough. Yeah. So they got, but they, y'all know it, Philadelphia, uh, Buffalo, Houston, teams they beat last year yeah. with Zach Wilson and, at and quarterback. And, and new, uh, I, I just think they got a okay. lot of talent. Buffalo self-destructed. So, so the, it was game one. I know, they, but Josh Allen melted down. That was a meltdown game okay. from Josh well, so Allen. So rather, okay. rather than look back on who they beat in last year's schedule, because we kind of get in circles no. on that. Let's look forward for a okay. moment, okay? Do Are we certain they have a top three AFC defense? I'm not. No. No. I, I think they, they – like, so Kansas I'm City – no. I'm just going to say out of the top of my – Kansas City, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. we'll see. Uh, Cleveland's defense was maybe the best in football last year. New England's defense should be excellent. One score points. The, uh, New England's offense is disastrous. But so the point is, and so. But you, they got the, a good defense. I think they have, have a good defense. Five. I do not <clears throat> doubt they have a good defense. But I don't think they have a great defense. I think they have a very good defense. It was probably, you know, yeah. seventh or eighth best sure. in football. I'll give you that. Uh, I think that's a fair, you know what I mean, expectation. If they're seventh or eighth. Seventh or eighth, you can right, that, exactly. Yeah. When you look at their skill position, guys, they're – Brew. Garrett Wilson? Brew, hold on. Like so, so, no, here's the problem. They're, <laughs> not a, they're not above average in the AFC. They're not. That's fine. But, but that, Garrett Wilson no, is above no, average. Right, but that's, but that's, that's why I – And actually, it, I would say they are above average. Okay, I mean, if we – Garrett Wilson has had two 1,000-yard seasons mm -hmm. again – Yes. With some of the right. worst quarterback play but in football. At, but at almost, What's he going to do with Aaron right, Rodgers? But how many teams, if we go up and down the AFC, have e either a guy as good as Garrett Wilson or a receiving core far better, right? Mike, so, like, if, if they're healthy. Hold on, Mike Williams is never healthy. He hasn't been healthy in, 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 since four years ago. And even if, when he is, he was more he's a, a of very, an idea. He's good. He's good. He had 300 yards last year. He didn't have 1,000 yards the year before. He had one awesome year, I think, three he's or four really years ago. Receiver. He's a great – and like we'll football. see about the offensive line. And Brees Hall is a talented young running back who last year almost averaged 65 yards per game. That's th that's their – and with a tight end position, that's not – There's not a ton the, of receiver, or running backs that average the, 65 yards well, per game. Well, that'd be 1,000 yards. I mean, I, I know, think last this, year it was 11 – It's not a ton of guys. Right, I think that. 12 guys maybe did. I, I mean, mean, and he so was – he missed some the, games, the, too. I think – last year, I think I think I he only he missed, missed one. And then, but he didn't – play. right, they, he was on a pitch count. Yeah. And then they tried to game the system at the end of the year to get him 2,000 – or 2,000 yards, and they couldn't do the math right. They got good – I just don't – They to me, they they are a team. With a average offensive weapons for the conference, an above average defense, a totally unproven offensive line, mm -hmm. a well below average coaching staff, and the oldest quarterback in the league who hasn't had a really good season in three years, and who hasn't Wilds? He hasn't thrown for 300 yards in 23 games. <laughs> so the the idea that that team is going to fight its way through the very meaty middle of the AFC is incredibly unrealistic. How did that team win seven games last year? Because it's Against hard. A, I wanna, it's, I wanna, I wanna honestly, because the league is built for everyone to win eight or nine. Yes. They beat That's them. why. They, okay, and so at, is their quarterback play going to be a lot better than it was last two years? It should be, yes. And that's not going to count for some victories? I think well, I think I think last year they won seven games. Here, I think Bruce, this year they'll win. Here's the, the Jets' last schedule, Bro. How many wins are you finding here? You're finding ten wins. I'm not making my final prediction yet, but well, yeah, you're starting I think off you can... 0 one. Yeah, zero and one. Okay. Uh, you one, know what? One, two, three. All, look, their next four games are winnable. After San Francisco. The, I don't know that they'll win off, but those next four are winnable. Could do that. Mm -hmm. Buffalo, let's say that's an L. Pittsburgh is is a toss-up. Patriots again. I get we'll it that, that maybe it's it's a division game and all that. Texans. The Texans, they beat them last year. 
Uh, then the Cardinals, the, the Colts. I mean, there are a lot of winnable games on there. What's the last? The, they got Miami. Seahawks, Miami, twice. Jacksonville, Rams, Buffalo, Miami. I'm telling yeah, you right now, they, they better have a there. lot of wins bagged by the time you get to week 13. Uh, you, you, They'll the, split with Miami. Would you give them that? The where? Yeah, probably. Last, that yeah. last. Sure. You got Seattle. That's winnable. Jags is, is yeah, winnable. Miami, that, we'll see where Miami those teams in uh, New York in week 18. That's probably not a great spot for two. It's going to be chill. No, no I, at listen, least 44 degrees. I, just, I think they're I think they're an <laughs> eight or nine win team. Yeah. I and guess, yeah. I think last year, when you look at it, that they're the, the year before last. Every single one of their wins, except for the one over Josh Allen and Aaron Rodgers, came against backup quarterbacks. Last year, when you look at it, four of those wins came against quarterbacks who are no longer starting quarterbacks in this league. Right. But I three of those think, quarterbacks yes. were C.J. Stroud, yes. Josh Allen, yes. and, yes. and Jalen Hurts. When you have a very good defense, <clears throat> there are going to be games the defense wins for you. But when, you have, when you're poorly coached, when you have a mismatched offensive line, when you don't have a dominant skill position group, and I don't think you have a reliable quarterback, you're going to give some of those games back on the other end, which is how you end up winning seven or eight games. How about that? Uh, coming up next, of course, Podcast Gate. Oh, 